filled with airplane peanuts. That Coke had to be in my pocket at 8 o'clock. I would fall apart at the seams. Yeah. And I would put it in my little drug pocket. Yeah. And it would stay there unbothered in a little baggy waterproof in case the fucking rain came. In case the floods came, in case yeah. something got biblical. Yeah. You could still break out of fucking... Yeah, I still, in case Louisiana all over again, <laughs> yeah. I'm on a tire floating, waving at the airport. <laughs> yeah. Fucking, I'm here, cocksuckers. Dude, how great would that be? You're on the news, they're like showing you, and you're just down there doing coke and they're fucking waving at the helicopters. <laughs> Like, how many videos are there of the news during Katrina where there's just a bunch of brothers just blowing a fucking blunt and they fucking couldn't put it on? And just yelling up, you can't stop me, bitches. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's an island. When you, you come from a fucking island, you, there's got to be incest somewhere along the line. I don't think I'd ever do incest, man. Even if I think I had the hottest, hottest fam family member ever, bro. Ever. Think about that, though, dude. What about, Say if what every about cousin. Listen, what, I don't what, want to talk about incest on the church, though. Okay, we my got, bad. My, we got fucking boundaries here. We can't right, be talking right, about right. incest. Uh, I had right. a cousin I wanted to fuck too as a kid. <laughs> okay, you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna lie to nobody. I, I ain't gonna just, bullshit nobody. I thought you just said we couldn't talk about it. But I'll never forget one night, like we were at this Cuban dude's house, and we were snorting coke, and she was sitting there with me, and this Cuban dude goes, "Not for nothing, but your wife doesn't say much." I go, "She's deaf." Hmm. She wasn't deaf. She just didn't speak Spanish. Oh, yeah. So the guy looks at me and goes, he's all coked up. He's like, I don't know if you know this. I work with deaf people in Cuba, <laughs> right? Oh, right? So, so she's like, I'm like, talk to her in deaf language. And he's like, <laughs> deaf e language. Ooh, 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 ooh. And he's doing all these noises and shit. And all of a sudden, she's like looking at me. And I go, she goes, what do I do? And I go, just throw some hang signals and fuck with him. And she's like, <laughs> and all of a sudden, he looks at me and goes, I never studied that language. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, man, dude, it's so funny. You know, sometimes when I, I'm not even joking about when I would need to think about something good, dude, I think about Lee, man. Well, thank you. That means a lot. Yeah, I think about you, man. I think you I just. I think about you to laugh. You, I mean, just the stuff you say randomly. Like, I just want to hang out and, like, listen to what you say during the day to yourself. I just, I feel like it's hysterical. This conversation is getting <laughs> creepy right here already. Well, you just farted on me. How? I think, I think Lee God might be a little cascarone. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I know what you're talking might, about. Think no, you know Shopping for closet. peppermint, they call it, dude, yeah, where I'm from. I think from. he's coming out of the closet pretty soon. Uh, they say, hey, you know the boy over there, little, little Lawrence. I don't give a fuck if he's Lee. I don't Lee's care dead. either, bro. I'll let you yeah, hang off my dick like he's, a fucking mountain cat. No, I would never let Lee. <laughs> Not you guys, but I I don't have the same relationship with him. Yeah, but you're still friends. You can't. I'm friends with him. I wouldn't fuck him. I would let him touch my dick a little. You know what I'm saying? Down the, around the holidays, bro? Just to make his day. Oh, he's a prison ham, this guy, bro. I fucking love that boy. Do you know how much money? I told Lee Walk, Walk, Walker Lee one night mm -hmm. you know how much money we can make with Lee on the inside. Oh, my oh, God. Just sitting on people's laps. Dealing cards. And rubbing their dick. Yeah. Bro, just I'm glad we're bringing this back. You can't just <laughs> sit on someone's lap, but they're not going to let it end at just lap sitting. Bro. Oh, so they're not in prison because they, 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 they know Gary, how to hold Indiana, back. Indiana, you're an eight, bro. A warm female. In Gary, Indiana, dog, you're oh, a female Gary, eight, baby. Indiana, I got a guy that'll pay 10 G's for you to put a wig on. And, <laughs> oh, and yeah. Special type of podcast. And just you. mug his dick with your fucking neck. He's already ripped me a letter. <laughs> what does that even mean, mug his dick? <laughs> Did now with your mom being so tough, was it like did was it tough to feel like affection from her? Because sometimes like my mom's a hard worker, right? My mom delivered, you know, she's a delivery woman. You know, she delivered newspapers since when I was a kid. She delivers magazines now. Um, she's always had a fucking van, you know. Now she's got my her husband. He has Alzheimer's. She don't even know he's in the van. He's with her every day, just fucking <laughs> bouncing around in the fucking passenger seat. She had to get a fucking second seatbelt installed for him because he fucking went kind of slip. He's getting little. He would slip out of the fucking first one. And now she's got him just basically in a fucking straight jacket, just bouncing around. He has no clue where he is. How just is delivering that? fucking news on wheels every day, you know? So you, I think he's about 90, you know? Your mom still does this? <clears throat> mom still does it, dude. And here's the worst part, bro. She got a good deal on this van, right? My mom likes a good deal in... She got a good deal on this van. Has no wind, none of the side or back windows, bro. So her fucking GPS is the Lord, bro. So she just fucking bouncing around. He's got him in the thing. And that and that fucking Denny's. I saw. Were you with me when we saw what's his name in there? I don't think so. Yeah, you were with me when we saw. Who was it? They got the braids. Home, home improvement. Oh, Tim he, Allen. He goes there all the time. Wow. That's a that's a swinging Denny's over there. Yeah. I just don't go in there at night because that's. 
you're born to get shot. You know, <laughs> yeah, after dude. nine. When oh, you go to a Denny's, like you might as well go to a Vegas to a country bro, concert. Bro, look. <laughs> when you go to Denny's after 10 nowadays, you might as well sign up yeah. for the next country fucking concert <laughs> yeah, and fucking whatever. Stand real close to the window and wave this time. Dude, this uh, is... <laughs> Bro, I used to do this bit about Denny's and how much I hated Denny's, right? Um, it's on your special. It's on my special, right? So anyway, I was like, I wish somebody would shoot up a fucking Denny's, right? That's what I would say. Dude, some kid puts in the comments, he goes, man, he puts a, cl- a, cl- a link to a YouTube clip. He goes, man, my dad actually got shot up at a fucking Denny's. He goes, somebody walked in with a gun and shot everybody in the place. One star. He goes, but I still love this bit that you do. And that was beautiful, bro. Here I am joking about it. He said it really happened. He lost his father right next to a fucking grill, bro. Right next to a griddle. You know what? You got, you know, two brothers back there fucking sword fighting with spatulas. (laughs) Probably hopped up on fucking (laughs) methamphetamines, you know? (laughs) Not knowing they're going to lose their job to a fucking Mexican guy sitting at the bar, you know? Unbelievable, man. But that's God, dude. That kid came and he was just positive, man. There's a couple places where I go late night and I'm like, like one night me, Lee, and Becky went to Denny's on a fucking, on a, on a fucking Sunday night after a podcast. And we were having a good time, but the whole time I was like squatting under the bush by that window because <laughs> the window is on Burbank Boulevard yeah. I want to be a crip alright shoot up at Denny's I'm sitting there having <laughs> fucking a salad yeah. and something with my friend here and all of a sudden and Becky's sitting counterclockwise so she gets it right in the head we gotta bury Becky with a hat on with a, with a ten planet fucking <laughs> <laughs> with a chef hat on I like Josh Wolf you know what I'm saying <laughs> oh I remember we walking around just hanging out you know drinking you know Havana Club you know or whatever you know people what year was this this is 2002 wow. so just walking around and uh, so there's some people hanging out in an alley that are kind of dancing and partying a little bit so we go over there and we think it's like a family it's like a birthday cake and stuff so we're singing you know, cumpleaños, everybody's having a nice time. We think, oh, we're, you know, we're in a different country. We're celebrating some guy's birthday. Then one of the dudes at the birthday starts eating this lady out. Fucking just, and we're like, this ain't, and we're like, oh, these are, oh, these are escorts. Like, we didn't know. We thought it was like a family. And next thing, we're all dancing with these fucking ladies and shit. We think it's like a grandmother and like a fucking birthday party. <laughs> next thing you know, one of the guys goes down by the lady's waist a little low and fucking just starts eating her pussy right there. And we're like, what the fuck? Welcome to Cuba. Yeah, this shit is fucking awesome. I was talking to somebody last week. I went to a party and there was boats, and next thing you know, there was a girl fucking a guy in the boat. I didn't know what to do. Get in there. Yeah, get jump a, in and fucking in call nine one one. What the fuck is yeah, wrong get with in you? There, yeah, get don't in just there. stand there. Don't just stand there. You're gonna stand and let somebody get that dick sucked. At least go and put a finger in their ass. Yeah, and work it. At least cheer for them. You know, my buddy. How many nights we leave here dying of hunger? You and I. One in the morning sometimes, me and him, he's cross-eyed. Yeah. This guy, if I t- at two in the morning, if I go and lean, listen, I got a, san- a sandwich coming over here, just jiggle my balls. I guarantee <laughs> I'll confuse him for 10 minutes. <laughs> He'll be sitting there confused. I don't know, I got this jiggle his balls. I'll wash my hands. I've done worse. I got a hand job from a Chinese chick one yeah. time. <laughs> fucking place is so expensive, I couldn't even sleep, you know? Like 600 bucks, I'm not fucking... I'll stay awake and watch the money go by, you know? At least enjoy to f- walk around the room. This thing's $600 a fucking night, you know? They had uh, like nine light switches in there, dude. It's like a fucking, I don't know where I was. It was insane, bro. Crazy. You could spend 40 minutes just fucking turning on all the lights. It's fucking crazy what we uh, do for a living. Man. It is, man. It gets really interesting. Let's take a, another couple calls if you don't mind. I got a piece. We'll take Joey. one more and we'll get the fuck out of here. You got, got it. Let's do it. Suggestions I can give my you start- Joey. What's some good advice or some suggestions I can give my wife for her first psychedelic trip? Appreciate it, man. Love you guys. Whoa. Is that guy living in an aquarium? You see that fucking guy right there? First thing for a psychedelic trip is... For his wife. For his wife. Just make it easy for her, but then fuck with her once she's high. Yeah. Oh, wait. I I think you told me a story about this one time. Yeah, when my first wife in San Francisco in 85... We took some Grateful Dead ass and we went to a party. I was very nice to her. You said her stepdad was at the airport. I kept telling her, don't you have to pick your father up at the airport? <laughs> and she's like, let's go. 
And she'd go, what time is he coming in? I mean, I had this poor girl going. Then there was a poster of Bruce Lee on the wall. Oh. And I kept going, to, looking at Bruce Lee going, don't say nothing to her. <laughs> oh, no, no, come on, bro. <laughs> don't, don't, dog, don't say nothing to her. She, she can't handle it. Oh, come she on. would look at me like, what's he saying? I don't know. Dude. No, <laughs> don't listen to him. I put that girl, that's the girl that I wrote the letter to. Oh, I bet it is, Because brother. I put her through death. In Africa, they hit you with a fucking pipe, bro, if they love you. Just take a whiff of that fart. I'm just not going to take a, take a whiff of your fart. That's Come disgusting. on, bro, get a little air appetizer, bro. Treat your but nose. Yeah, that is tremendous. Treat man. your snout to some of that fucking free booty pasta, bro, bro. <laughs> like my tits are out. Yeah. You can feel the beads. <laughs> I remember getting off the plane in Miami the next morning, and my pants were fucking wet. And the waitress, the, the, the stewardess, would just walk in the halls, look at me, and give me a water. <laughs> she knew how <laughs> fucked up I was. Dude, my buddy and his brother used to get so fucked up on coke in Miami, then they'd go up to their hotel room, put on diapers, bro, because they kept shitting themselves, and just go back down to the fucking dance floor. Just partying with diapers full of shit, bro, just dancing. And they could dance, bro. I mean, these boys could fucking dance. But who wants to dance with somebody who smells like shit? But I think they... And mass- you start moving, that shit starts <laughs> oh, shaking. Dude, me, look, bro, look, bro. Bro, I used to get coked up with a dude. That's what it's like to be, uh, I think, they were Latinos for sure. I used to get coked up with a dude that used to put a string on his wrist. Mm-hmm. And the string would go to the doorknob. So if you tried to open the doorknob, his string... Bro, I used to get high with some crazy people. Yeah. Dude. I used to get high with his brother, who was mm-hmm. bald. Mm-hmm. And his brother would be talking to him. Like, we'd be doing coke. Like, yeah, yeah. And also he'd go... Like what? And he go, and he'd smack himself because he kept thinking flies were landing no. on his head. He would smack himself eighty fucking times a night, Damn. and we would laugh at every <laughs> fucking time. And after he'd smack himself, he'd go, <laughs> "Oh yeah, <laughs> bro." He used to put balloons. He lived on the thirty fourth floor. I had another friend, Kurt. He's mm-hmm. dead now. Rest in peace. Good, good dude. He used to get so paranoid that he would put little parachutes. On his cocaine, so if the cops came, he would throw it out the window, <laughs> and the little parachutes would fly. I mean, that's the shit that was the eighties, you know. That's God, the eighties was good, bro. Have you ever noticed when you learn something about somebody you didn't know? You know, like you see somebody and they're like a lawyer or something, but then you realize they're like a sorcerer or something, or they do shady, shady shit. Or you see them like ballroom dancing, and you're like, this fucking guy ballroom dances. I always that that always takes my brain a minute. Or if you see a big, big person and they got their stomach stapled, and now, dude, I was at a pool one time, and I used to work on this farm in the summer times outside in Natchez, Mississippi, and they had uh and this dude Don Blankenstein was the pool guy every year, right? And he'd come out there, and I'd keep an eye on him because the dude weighed probably seven or eight hundred pounds, bro. Jesus. You know what I'm saying? He broke the gate every time he come in. He but fucking he was the lifeguard. He was, you know. How can you get a lifeguard 800 pounds? Bro, he say? gets in the pool. It's trust old. me, nobody's drowning, bro. All the water's out, and the fucking kid who's sick is laying right he there at his the feet. He was the boss at the pool. No, he was the, thick, he was the guy who came to put the, the cleaner in the pool. And so, but he'd open the gate, bro, and every time he'd walk through it and bring both sides of the gate down. Like, he was just a, he was going to die soon, you know, when you saw him. You know, so you treated him well. And that's one thing I like sometimes about seeing huge people that remind you how to treat other people. Because you're like, oh, this person isn't going to be alive very long, so you would be extra nice to him. And so, but then Don, one summer, I'm I'm out there laying by the pool, and uh, and this skinny guy comes in. You know, he could have fit through the gate with ninety of his fucking, you know, quintuplets or whatever. <laughs> and he comes through the gate, and I'm like, who? And he keeps talking to me, and I'm thinking the guy's kind of a you know peppermint hunter, bro. You know what I'm saying? A little tender. And it turns out it's Don Blankenstein. He got the stomach thing, and he lost all the weight. And he was a different person, though. He wasn't the same. I don't know. It wasn't the same. And our relationship was never the same as when he lost as when when he lost the weight. <laughs>